The Little Robber Girl, a new audio drama by Deirdre DeWire, presented by Broken Crow in association with Garter Lane Art Centre and The Everyman. Episode 3, The Missing Jewels. And so, thanks to a kind-hearted stranger with a need for a bike and a few, shall we call them untruths here and there, Matty had managed to get herself and Artie onto a boat and a good way closer to tracking down her mother. The next step, however, would probably not be quite as simple. What are you on about? It'd be a cinch. I'm sure. Uh, what now, Maddie? Eh? What next? Leave it with me, Arthur. I don't quite have the plan fully worked out, but, you know, it'll come to me. You're fair good at this driving the boat. I've been off and on boats since I was a baby. Yeah? What's the longest boat trip you've ever been on? Well, we always take the same trip to the same islands off the coast of France every summer. It's a long way for such a small boat, but Mam and Dad are prepared for anything. They always say, plan to follow the plan. And it's always seen us through. And what happens when the plans need to change? Why would it? Mam and Dad always look at things from every angle. For our trips, they look up the weather forecast, check the tides, pinpoint our stops on the coast, and map out the route to the island. Yeah, but sometimes things just go wrong, you know? Well, nothing gets left to chance with them, and I guess some of the planning is rubbed off on me. Here, have a look in that bag there, Matty. Whoa, Finn! What's all this? Flapjacks, bananas, sandwiches, and is that a flask of tea? There's enough stuff to last us a week, lad. And what's this wrapped up in tinfoil? It's some of the leftover fish from last night's dinner for, for Artie. Does he eat fish? Artie eats that, don't you, Art? Here you go. <laughs> well, dig in yourself, Matty. And will you pass me a banana? Here. And Finn, thanks. This is great. All of this is just great. You're welcome, Matty. Do you want to come up here and see where we're going? How well I do. How do you know where we're going, Finn? In the harbour, it's easy. I just keep an eye on the landmarks around me. I know these waters and cliffs like they're the back of my hand. And if we were going out, we have these. What's them? They're charts of the waters. Open up the middle page there. See? Dunhaven and, and Thunder Bay. Yeah. And... Oh, here. Here's Carrie Rowan. You've heard of Carrie Grove? Eh, uh, might have. What do you know about it yourself? Well, it's a rocky island, about 60 miles offshore that way, due south. Mostly it's just home to seals and seagulls, but there are lots of funny stories. Stories like what? Wild weather and extreme tides and mermaids and monsters. Monsters? Yeah, I don't know. The fisher folk avoid it, especially when the tides are high at the equinox in spring or autumn. There had been boats wrecked and people have talked about seeing something huge. Oh, Finn, today is the autumn equinox. Yeah, and the full moon is tonight, so this evening's high tide will likely be the highest one all year. That's it, high tide. Story said there was a cave that could only be reached at the Queen Tide. What are you talking about, Matty? What story? Come here, Finn. I've got to get out to Carrigroan. I've got to get to Seal Don't Island. Don't be daft. It'd take us hours and hours to get there and back. And like I said, it, it would be the worst time to go today. It's nice and calm here in the harbour, Matty. But as soon as you get out to the open water, it's a different story. But I've got to get out there. And I'm going to. And if you won't take me, then I swear... Now don't be silly, Matty. Silly? I'll show you. Show me what? What are you doing? I'm jumping in. What? Hey, wait. Get back from the edge. Sit down. What's gotten into you? Tell me. I'm not sure I can, Finn. Well, you better try or I'm turning us around right no. now. we got to go on. Please. We're not going anywhere till you explain to me what is really going on. I've got to go help my mam, Finn. I've got to. Your mam? Where is she and why does she need help? Did you see any strangers down at the docks yesterday, Finn? Well, 
Last night, just before I bumped into you, there were an interesting crew I've never seen before. They left just before you got there, and the captain did have long red hair. And her crewmate, too. They didn't have a boat. Oh, right. Probably not them, then. But they did have a submarine. A submarine? What? Well, it was pretty cool. I've never seen one in Dunhaven before. A submarine? Deadly. Did she look okay? Is your mammy in trouble? What's really going on, Matty? I don't know everything, Finn, but I do know in me bones, me mam needs my help. I think she's head of a carry growing, and if she is, then so am I. And if you're not going to help me, then I'm going on my own. Which way did you say? South? I'm going. Ah, stop it. Get down from there, Matty. Now. I'm not messing. It's October, the water's freezing. You won't last a minute. I don't have a choice. Don't doubt it, just do it. Stop. Fine, so... I'll do it. I'll help you. Will you be? All this for a stupid bike. Mom will kill me when she notices the boat is gone. I'll be in such trouble. But in the meantime, I better plot a course to Carrig Rome. I'll make a pirate out of you yet, Finn. And besides, I didn't really fancy the swim. I'd never have made it in time. Now you tell me. So, Matty managed to find her way as usual. Finn turned the engine back on and began his checks. He checked that they would have enough fuel for the new, longer return journey. There's enough, but only just. That'll get us and back for sure. He pulled out the extra wet weather gear from under the seats at the back and handed them out to his passengers. They should fit you. Here, I've a baby jacket for Arthur. It should fit him if you roll up the sleeves. Look, it's, it's going to be cold and wet out there, Matty. Then Finn turned to his charts. He really was a good boy. He'd never done anything like this before. And though he was nervous, there was a part of him that was excited to be captain of this little ship and to be finally going on an adventure of his very own. At the same time, back on the shore, Sam and Mike had spent a very uncomfortable night sleeping under an upturned boat not far from the docks. Come on, Mike. We better be getting up. Time to look for our Matty. I'm wrecked, Sam. I barely got a wink of sleep. You snore like a train. It's loudest when I sleep on my back. Sorry about that. And a barking dog woke me up at first light, and some kerfuffle from a boat heading off. What would they be doing at all at that hour? But I just rolled over. Ah, me back is at me now. You'd miss the mattresses on the barge, eh? Getting soft we are. You would, Dad. Come on, so. Let's see if we can find our girl. On the boat, Finn plotted the best course to Carrick Rowan. Okay. Tell me everything you know. Well, my best lead is my bedtime story from years ago. A bedtime story? We're out here because of a bedtime story. Shush and listen. You might learn something. Are you ready? This is how my mammy always told it. Once upon a time, there were two sisters. One was older and sensible, and one was younger and wild. They lived together on a big old wooden sailboat. These two sisters were pirates. Brilliant and dangerous pirates. <laughs> That's right, love. Brilliant and dangerous pirates, skilled sailors and masters of disguise. Sure, that's how they managed to get away with their cunning crimes until the day they retired. Retired? What's retired? Um, it's stopping, I suppose. Did they get caught, ma'am? No, indeed they did not. They only stopped once they pulled off the biggest heist of their lives. what they get, ma'am? And how'd they get it? These two brilliant and clever pirates stole a large shipment of jewels traveling from Dunhaven to Dublin. What kind of jewels, mammy? <gasps> Diamonds big as hen's eggs, rubies the size of plums, and pearls that looked like golf balls. They were the most beautiful jewels the sisters, or anyone, had ever seen. And besides those, there were stacks of gold bars. The pirate sisters reckoned they'd never have to work another day in their lives. They were set. But, 
As always in life, things did not go to plan. What happened? Tell me, ma'am. What happened next? Ah, hush, Matty. You're supposed to be getting ready for sleep, not getting all hyped up with the story. Ma'am, hurry on. I'll settle down when it's over. Oh. The sisters decided they could live off the gold alone, so they needed to find a safe place to hide the jewels for a few years, just until the hunt cooled down. The young sister, who had always been headstrong and stubborn, picked the most dangerous hiding place, the fool. And just this time, the big sister forgot she was sensible and went along with her. What was dangerous about it, ma'am? From old maps, she had learned about a secret place in a secret cave on a secret island. She thought it was the safest place to hide their treasure because it was only accessible when the water was at its highest, the queen tide. If they went at the wrong moment, they'd either be crushed against the roof of the cave or the water would empty out and they would be trapped on the rocky floor. Ooh, so what happened, ma'am? The younger sister moored their sailboat close to the seal-covered island, while the older sister prepared the rowboat with the jewels on board. They timed it all to perfection. Getting to them out of the cave was a tricky manoeuvre, but these two managed it together and, with skill, rowed into the very back. It was there, in a curved hollow high up in the back of the cave, that they placed their sack of priceless gems before they turned to head back to their sailboat. The water was dropping fast and they had to row with all their might to get back out safely under the moonlight. They did it! Phew! And then they lived happily ever after as rich queens. <laughs> I'm afraid that's not really the end, Matty. When the sisters returned, they saw their precious sailboat, their home, was leaning to one side. The little sister, as careless as always, had not tied it off to its anchor point well enough. The boat had gotten loose and, with the sinking tides and wild waves, it had been dashed onto the sharp rocks. There was now a hole in the hull, the size of the rowboat, and it was rapidly sinking. Ah, oh, ma'am! Did they save it? What about the gold? That night, they lost their home, along with all the gold. And it was the fight that followed as they watched their future sink to the bottom of the sea that cost them their friendship. What? Friendship ruined? Over a little thing like that? It was not a little thing, Matty. Everything was gone. And it wasn't the first time the younger sister had been careless. The older sister always had to fix the mistakes of the younger. And this was the very last straw. Things were said that could not be taken back. They rowed to shore and they never spoke again. The end. The end? The end? What are you talking about, ma'am? They have to get back together. They sound like a deadly team. Swashbuckling pirates, tons of jewels, sisters. You know the rule, Matty. Don't doubt it, just do it. The big sister had made up her mind. She had cleaned up too many messes, saved her sister's skin too many times. After that, she never stayed in one place long enough to look back. Even if she wanted to, she could never have found her little sister again. Now, really, sleepy time. Get into that bed and shut your eyes. There'll be no more stories tonight. But ma'am, it would be better if they made friends again. Matty, sometimes you don't get to change stories. Sometimes they are the way they are. I said that was enough. Now shut your eyes and sleep tight. So you think that's your mam and her sister? Pirates? And that they hid the gems on Carrig Roan? Do you think that's where they're going? To go back and get the gems? And by the sounds of the submarine to get the gold from the sunken boat too, Finn. Matty, Pirates and fisher folk are kind of the opposites. We're sensible and do the same thing day in, day out, and they're... Well, they're pirates. I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to help. Finn, I've got a feeling that when the time comes, you'll know just what to do. I've never done anything like this before in my life. Matty, Carrigrone is really dangerous. 
Your ma'am's story proves it. And I've never navigated in the dark before. Tonight is a full moon. You said it yourself. You'll be grand. I believe in you, Finn. Finn was deep down a really, really good boy. At home, he always helped unpack the shopping and after Sunday lunch in his nan's house, he'd clear the table and do the washing up. He tried hard not to tell lies and he never took more than his fair share of dessert. But something inside him had always longed to do something a bit brave, a bit reckless. Okay, let's do it. Let's go south and on to Carrig Road. Yes, go on, Finn! To Carrig Rowan, to find treasures and to my man. And so Finn pressed in the throttle and the boat jumped forward. The sea spray splashed around them as they headed out of the harbour and into deeper water. You have been listening to the voices of Jackie Kelleher, Killian Jacob, Nicholas Kavanagh, George Hanover, Michael Power and Joe Marr. The illustrator for episode 3 was Roisin Hahasi. For more information about the cast and crew, go to deirdredewire.com or brokencrow.ie. This project was only possible thanks to the support of the Arts Council, Waterford City and County Council Arts Office, Imagine Arts Festival, and you, the listener.